G'day guys and welcome back to the Back Pocket Plugger Podcast, podcast made by Battlers for the Battlers. A special shout out to all the Back Pockets out there. Don't get me wrong, we have plenty of time for our midfielders, our full fours, the goal kids, but G, do we have a special place in our hearts and our fists and our tenacious spirits for the Back Pockets out there. Well, we've both spent plenty of times just in the... The deep waters of the back pocket land. Oh, I'm I'm officially out. I've, well, that is breaking news. <laughs> uh, and I'm not saying this with pro, uh, with pride because we know how much I love the back pocket. Yeah. But I'm officially, I've played the first game ever on a wing and lo and behold, it was the first game ever named in the best. Wow. Well, congratulations. Well, I mean, it's just Division 2 reserves. It's nothing to be really congratulated <laughs> about. But it's just, I, I, I thought that back, the back pocket was my home. I thought it's where I played my best footy. As it turns out, getting the pill on the wing and having a run and bounce, it has something to it. Well, I might have to get a new co-host next week. Yeah, <laughs> or change the name. Yeah. The, the, the middle wingers yeah, the, podcast. <laughs> the flying wingman. Um, great great weekend of footy. Fantastic weekend of footy for everyone except for Carlton fans. Just do that. <laughs> well, yes, uh, that was a, a, a big story. Once out again... Weekend. Um, I went to two games of footy. You went to two as well. I did. We've just been going to that much football recently. I know. Yeah. I think it's a testament to the new the new rules rules <laughs> and how good the game is. Because I used to, I'd go to the odd Carlton game, and when I had time, I'd go, but very very rarely. One uh, particularly articulate man may say, seldom. Would I ever go and mm. watch a neutral game? Yep. Now I can't get enough of the neutral games. Hook it up to me veins. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Inject it right into me veins. Oh, absolutely. Ben Cousins style. Yeah, exactly. Which uh, there was a pic of him going viral from the weekend at the West Coast game. Well, he's um, playing at, footy again. Yeah, looked a little bit more yeah, healthier. He's back. Good on. Shout out to Benny Cars. Sorry, I've just potted you, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're big fans. Uh, we're moving on to uh, a new segment. No, oh, new. I feel like every week will be a new segment. I don't know if we're going to have too many continuous ones, but yes, a new segment. Uh, we're going for our headline. Yeah. So if we were to start our own paper, Dawson Raj Limited, mm. uh, what would be our leading article? What would be the back? written on the back page of our paper. Yeah. And this week it is D's Dogs Contenders. Carlton Pretenders. Jeez, I wouldn't mind a bit of a question mark on the end of uh, the Contenders one. D's Dogs question I mark. I reckon exclamation mark. <laughs> I reckon maybe even the double exclamation mark. The the 50-year-old ma- man who's just getting used to Facebook <laughs> just using too many exclamation yeah. marks. Yeah, your uncle or auntie. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, um, well, we did kick off last week with a lot of D's chatter. We did both go to the Blues game. So I think we talk about the Blues to kick things off. I was going to say, I feel like it's no surprise that our first headline does involve D's and Carlton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Considering we just went to the games as well. So we'll start with Carlton. Um, Jay, it's just usually you know how sometimes there's a bit of pessimism about a football club. You still have those really optimistic supporters who go, hang on, let's not throw the baby out with the bath order. Yep. Uh, you know, <laughs> we've got this, this and this to work with. Everything will be okay. <laughs> this is different. This felt like everyone is on the same page. And it's not, you know, Break glass in case of emergency. Oh, no, we're... It's not play the kids, we're rebuilding. Yeah, it's not that, but it's just an overwhelming sense of disappointment of we're still that far off the mark. It wasn't... It didn't feel like just a bad game. Yep. It felt like a true indicator of how far off the mark we are. Yep. I feel like it was It was weird uh, being a neutral at that game because the buzz around the game beforehand was very exciting. Yep. And just... The, the the groans and moans throughout the first half and then just the flat feeling from the third quarter onwards reminded me of many, many years in the red and the blue. And it was just uh, amazing to see all the Blues fans in the same boat. Like They're all laughing at the same whipping boys. They're all sort of rolling their eyes at the same skill errors. And it was just like 30,000 Blues fans going, oh, no. <laughs> well, you know how um, – you're absolutely right. You know how usually – there are times where a team can trick the footy public into thinking they're a bit better than what they are. There, there's a bit of a hype train going and everyone's going, oh, they, they're, they're on here, they're, they're, they're a contender. Yep. Um, but really, do they fool the bookies? The bookies generally somehow or another are smarter than the footy public. They don't get tricked by a facade. <laughs> yeah. This week, Carlton were paying... Of dollar ninety three and Port Adelaide were a dollar ninety. The bookies considered it to be an even money contest. They even acknowledged, "Gee, this could Carlton are on here." Kane Corns 
the the Port Adelaide man, staunch Port Adelaide uh, defender and a staunch Tex Walker hater. He <laughs> not that that's relevant at the moment, <laughs> but he tipped Carlton. He tipped the Baggers to beat Port Adelaide. He was bought into what he invested in what we're selling. Kane Gons does some of that stuff, so then it gives him the license on the Monday to go hard. Yeah, like before Adelaide finished last last year, he tipped him to win the flag. Yeah, or maybe it was the year before, but he he definitely. He does stuff like that. Where I don't think he tipped Adelaide to win the flag last year. Going into last year. Uh, I couldn't have. Was that, were they, yeah, so it might have been the year before. Must have been might have been the year before and they finished like 10th or something. Yeah. But he's someone who, who he'll, yeah, he'll set the bar high so then he can write the article on the Monday. And I feel like, because maybe we, we all were tricked because I, I tipped him in my vlog as we went. But when you think about it, like, yeah, the Blues, you know, they knocked off Freo and, Gold a, a bit of a, a dodgy effort up, you know. It was it wasn't easy against the Suns, and the power have just knocked off Richmond. Like, how come we? <laughs> I know. I isn't know. it funny in hindsight? <laughs> it always happens with tipping. I tip the baggies. Yeah. It always happens in tipping. Where I remember the other week, I tipped against. West, I tip. I think I tipped Port Adelaide to beat West Coast in the West or something like that, and West Coast won comfortably. And yep. I was sitting there going. Why the bloody hell did you tip West Coast in the West? Good uh, tip against West Coast in the West. Yeah. Good one, genius. Yeah. Uh, but no, Carlton extremely disappointing, and it's got now. It just it's not that we lost. Port Adelaide are a contender. You yeah. lose, so beat. It was a really poor effort. Just felt like there there wasn't much effort, but the effort that was there, we couldn't capitalize. Skills atrocious, and now people are questioning the coach. Well, yeah, the questions that. Because I have had many Monday mornings, Monday like heaps of Monday afternoons where I'm watching your footy classifieds and these sort of questions are getting asked at the D's um, because I've been through it and you've been through it as well. But the questions that I hated in the more recent years, uh, probably over the 2019-2020 season was, oh, I think they've overestimated their list. And that's when I start sitting there as a fan and I start second guessing, you know, oh, geez, well, I've invested in these draft picks that the club's got and I do see potential in them, but now everyone's questioning them. And I heard a couple of questions on your, your footy, well, not your footy classifieds, but yeah, um, access all areas and stuff. And they go, uh, very, very niche program for your, I love for that your show. opinions. It's good, good show. I access. love that show. Underrated show, access all areas. But uh, yeah, your Damo Barrett's and yeah, your Matty Lloyd types are questioning well, it was Kane Corns on Sunday Footy Show now that I think about it. But questioning the, the players that are in there, are they the players you thought that they would be? And will these draft picks that you've had over the last few years become the players that you thought they would Well, there become? are a few write-offs in there. There are a couple. Uh, obvious, their name's been slandered and <laughs> rightfully so. But there, yeah. there's a couple of obvious ones. Then there are some like your Petrovsky seasons who, for mine, there are, there are very average footballers out there, right? So take someone like a, um, like a Dow. Mm. who uh, is yet to poll a three-vote game. I don't know if he's even polled in the Brownlee. Maybe he has. I could be wrong. But I don't think. I know he hasn't had a three-vote. He probably hasn't had a two. If he's scraped in for one, but I don't think he has. Yeah. Petreski Seaton has two three-vote games. Playing in the midfield, he has good, bad players don't get, three, don't get two three-vote games. There are 44 AFL footballers out there. You're not the best twat on two occasions mm. out of those 44 unless you can play. Both of them are in the midfield. Let's move him back into the midfield. Stop mm. this halfback experiment. Get Zach Williams out onto a halfback flank. Petreski said yep. in the guts. There are just moves that I think should be made. And I think, I don't know, but there are questions being asked of Teggy. Does he move the magnets enough? Or is he a bit steadfast? But time, time will tell. Time will tell. People were, And I feel like this is the easy cop-out now because they've done it. But people ask question of Damien Harwick and the Tigers when they were yep. finishing ninth again. And then it, with the same list... It's not like, you know, they always had Martin, they always had Koch, and they always had Edwards. With the same list, it clicked, and they've turned into a dynasty. So he's hoping that, you know, we're on our journey there. This is a flat spot, but when it all clicks, we'll get there. That's the optimistic side. Well, I think by year's end, you win half the games you play, you lose half the games you play. I think you're going to have patches this year where you're going, yep, I see where we're going. And you're going to have a couple game patches this year where – that short fused frustration will come out where you go, oh no, is this the direction we're going? But I think it'll be one of those half and half years, which might be frustrating, but I don't think you're too far away. But yeah, it is a frustrating sort of weekend to come off. 
Well, here's hoping we got the Lions next week. A win against them will um, do wonders for for our confidence, hopes, and our respect from the rest of the competition. But <laughs> moving on to the rest of the headlines, uh, the D's and the Dogs. They are they the two last undefeated teams? Yep. So Believe- Swans lost to GWS. Yep. And G, I think that we can really lock in now that the two of them are legitimate contenders. You can guarantee now, guarantee that they are both going to win at least one final. The- <coughs> There is I don't want to be associated with any of these sort of comments. Oh, well, I will eat at my hat if the Ds and Dogs don't win a final each. Anytime I go, geez, we're looking okay, a tornado rips through the club and something happens and, and, yeah. and we don't go the way I think we will. So I'm, I, I definitely appreciate that that's an opinion of a lot of people and it's so exciting. Mm. And I can understand that opinion because – that f- the fundamental of like a pressure contested side is there. It, it's the DNA of a team that would go a long way I- in a season. But geez, I'm just yeah, lids on. Hats <laughs> off, hats off to Simon Goodwin because coming into this season, he was just about the coach under the most hot. heat. As it in, was hot. if the demons lost the first couple of games, yeah, he's it just. He was under more pressure than anyone. Any other coach that loses their first two games, it would have been Simon Goodwin. Yeah. Um, so kudos to him coming out winning four and zero, and all, all that, of a sudden, all that chat's gone. Exactly. It's Isn't evaporated. That unreal? It's evaporated. Same in a month. team, same game plan. You haven't really changed anything, I don't think. No. Um, but all this conversation about Goodwin, it's no one said a word. You're it's just, crazy. I I said to you starter last year. I said. I hate when we play catch up with the losses where it's like one win, three losses, but then we win two in a row, so we're three and three, but then we're three and four. I, I hate when you're just behind the eight ball in a season because the chatter starts and it builds the pressure on the club. And I just want like a clean slate. And I remember saying that to you last year and our first eight games were, I think we were well behind the eight ball before going up into the hub. And I said it to you again this year. I was like, I just want that, that one or two game break where you start the season and you get two weeks respite. It's gone on to five, oh. <laughs> and it just the the it's just such an exciting time because it's like whether whatever happens this year, the next few years is it's something's gonna happen. Like it's exciting. Can you tell me when your lid will be off? You beat the Tigers this weekend. Are you happy to say contenders lock in that? Uh, G Pat, don't you dare book those <laughs> tickets in the last weekend of September. I've got somewhere to be, and that place is the MCG. <laughs> Um, I don't think I'll ever say the lid's off. I think I've been through the ringer and I think after 2018 of going, oh yeah, we'll probably play, play finals next year mm. and then finishing second last. I think the little beyond until we lose the first final and we're out and then I'll go, oh, I should have had the lid off. That was an exciting yeah, time. Yeah, I should yeah, have right, enjoyed it. Right. Um, But if I'm going to be honest, I think it, and trying to leave the bias uh, red and blue blood in my veins good luck out, out of this opinion i struggle to see this <laughs> coming to fruition but especially go on with my li- Emmy. especially with my literal yeah. melbourne hat yeah. on <laughs> take your melbourne hat yeah. off mate. <laughs> um the uh, the football that i'm watching is so phenomenal like, isn't it the brand super the brand if this was anyone else if it was richmond playing this brand everyone would be like yeah you told me we were texting during the, we were both at the Demons Hawks game. We weren't together, um, and you were texting me. I think it was halfway through the third quarter, maybe a bit earlier. And I said maybe it was half time. And I said, "Don't worry." It looked like you know it, it was, could be close. Yes, yeah, third quarter. And I said, "Easy five goal win plus." Yeah. And I didn't just say that as a laugh. I said, "Looking at this game, easy five. The Demons will break your win by five goals plus." Lo and behold, you did. I'm not saying that I'm an oracle or a genius, um, but I probably am. Yeah, I think you are. Yeah. <laughs> it got to 50 points in the end. Yeah. Which is, which is crazy. But the team who I think at the moment is the yardstick, and you would always say the Tigers and West Coast and Port are obviously, but obviously going to be there. But, geez, the Western Bulldogs. Their midfield is unlike – I know pe- this, always, this conversation tends to always come up, I, I reckon. Most years there's a team that has the best midfield. Like they might have three stars and people say – is this the best midfield we've ever seen? Does this compete with Voss, Sakamanis, Black, etc.? Yep. Um, but like in terms of consistency across the board, every week it's not like you have one week where the Bont's fantastic, but Liber and Dunkley's quite. Yeah. You don't have another week where the cards are flipped. Whatever. Every week, all of them, 
every single one of them are contributing. That's crazy. How are you going to stop them? That's crazy. They've got, um, you know, I know that he's no star, but they've got uh, Shaki waiting in the, and Oogle Hagen in the key forward departments. Maybe the one area is a key back department. They could be a little bit fragile, but at the moment, gee, the doggies, they're, they're the premiership favourite, I think. I know everyone will say the Tigers. Yep. I think the Dogs are the premiership favourite. If Gun to Me had life's on it, I had to pick a team that's going to win the flag this year. I reckon I'm backing the Doggies. Well, the, yeah, they'll play in a prelim. Like, and they will be dangerous to come up against in the finals. Who'd have thought a Steph Martin, Tim English duo would be so lethal? Well, Kane Corns was saying on the Sunday footy show that um, he loves that, uh, like, uh, that clubs are going with a real experienced ruckman and a r- younger, inexperienced ruckman who plays forward. So he mentioned Jackson and Gorn and Martin and English. From now on, I don't reckon we quote or give credit to the people who formulate these ideas. We just, <laughs> I reckon <steal> <laughs> most of our people won't be listening to those programs. <laughs> I reckon we just say and with confidence, you might get the odd person calling us out, but we pretend like we're the football geniuses behind the yeah, operation. All right, yeah, all right. At the moment, it's like we've almost got a reference list. You're coming to us for an essay and it's just yeah. well, us quoting every, everyone well, else. I, I either quote Kane Corns or Cooko. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, true. Uh, that's, yeah, yeah, that's journalism one hundred and one. Would who would be your premiership favourite? It would be Bulldogs, the, Richmond, Port. In order, West Coast. Okay, yeah. Well, do you think that's the top four? Are you saying you don't think Melbourne will make the top four? Well, I think the D's probably could make the top four, but in terms of like power, Dave, rankings, you're good. You're good at the political. You're good at using your coulds or maybe, or if all <laughs> things go right. I'm trying my hardest to get out of you. The uh, lid is bubbling. Def- yeah, I want you to say one statement that, that hints at the lid being off, but you're doing and, and well. Then, and then you're just going to grab it and hold it for the rest Absolutely, of the year. Absolutely, but you are playing the straightest bat. But I'm telling you, mate, one week I'm going to see you flourish <laughs> one over the over the infield and uh, I'll catch you on the bound, on the. Fence. If we've only dropped, yeah, if we've only dropped one or two by Queen's birthday and then yep. have a really solid win over the Pies, I think that's when. Who have you got after Richmond? North Melbourne. <laughs> so you, you, if you beat Richmond, you're six and zero. Oh. <laughs> um, Anywho, uh, there's a question that leading on from that. There's a question that I want to ask you. Yeah, question. Yeah. Uh, what? And this is you can interpret this any any way you like. Yeah. <laughs> what would you give for Melbourne? Guaranteed Melbourne to have a dynasty, and I know it wouldn't. It did take the fun out of it if you knew the dynasty was coming. Yeah. So I have a little uh, Men in Black memory stick, so you can guarantee now that Melbourne are going to have a dynasty. Mm-hmm. What if I offered you a year off your life total? Would you take it? Yeah. A a year. I don't really care about living that much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> if I offered you a year off your girlfriend's life, but she doesn't know about it. Would you take it? Um, doesn't matter if you died 87 know. instead of 88. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. Well, she's really fit. She eats all the right things. Um, don't need to brag, mate. Loves a... <laughs> <laughs> Our single lads out here don't need to be... Really athletic. Yeah, right. right. Loves, loves a green tea. Loves yep. a power walk. Um, goes to body fit. So I feel like she's living... Shout nudging, out nu- to Body Fit, one of the, <laughs> the best gym, the best gym in the country. I feel like George is nudging her 90s. Right. And, so it doesn't and, matter. And, and comfortably. So... so an eighty nine, that's a great innings. That's a fantastic innings, and oh. how and the joy you would get. I think she, I would think, if I asked her, G Pat, a year off your life for the sake for of like five or six years, where we're just happy <laughs> <laughs> for for guaranteed Caden to be as happy as Oliver will be. Three out of the next four flags, I reckon she. If she, if she said if she denied it, I think you have to question. And I knew your uh, relationship. And like I know my girlfriend well, so I know she won't deny it. So so we'd give a year off the girlfriend's life. Yeah. So let's try. And <laughs> oh God! Here I am trying to get get you to say one outlandish statement about your days this season, and you refuse to give me anything. But you're really. But I'll more, kill my girlfriend. You can kill your girlfriend for a year for for a dynasty. Goes to show. Goes to show where you're at. Would you uh, go without? Uh, Food, would you only eat white bread for six months? Uh, depends if I got sick. No sickness, perfect health. But I'd feel shit. No, you'd feel fine. This is just oh, a well, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. well okay. what about you? What, what is there anything that um, like, you, you would do anything for a, a Carlton for Dynasty? A Carlton Dynasty, 
Um, I would not drive my car for <laughs> three years. Yeah, I'd be able to be a pub- really inconvenient. I'd be a public transport man for the next three years. I would uh, give up all of my jobs. Would you give up alcohol for five years for a six-year Carlton Dynasty? Six years is in, what, four flags in six years? Yeah, prelims every year as well. Five years without the grog. Yeah, and two, three brand lows in there. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. That, you couldn't now really that's, celebrate now the flags. That, now that's a good question. <laughs> Uh, I don't think I would. You know why? Because I, because <laughs> I think the fun I would have for the next five years of yeah. alcohol, music festivals, parties, I think that that would be equally as fun as as a dynasty. <laughs> Maybe not equally, but right up there. Yeah. But yeah, it's nice to know where our uh, nice to know where our priorities are at. Well, I can't believe I killed my girlfriend off. But. Yeah, well, I'd be happy to take years off mum and dad's life. No worries whatsoever. <laughs> but the alcohol, you're not touching it. Yeah. You know what the other thing is as well? It'd end up doing so much harm to me because if I turned off the alcohol, who knows what I'd turn, turn my <laughs> attitude towards. So probably the best we stick to mm. stick to the grog. Um, after last week's show, um, good good friend of the show in the sense that uh, he's a teammate of mine, Connor Silky Gavin. Yep. Made an observation to me. He messaged me about... You, uh, not just the podcast, you messaged me about your channel. Oh. And he had a question that I think a lot of your fans would be dying to know the answer to. <laughs> oh, God. Why is it that you, 50,000 plus subs, uh, superstar, can't go, can't go outside without photos being taken, legitimate <laughs> celebrity status in this state, football icon. Why? <laughs> That's wh- a massive rap. <laughs> why is it that you're kicking around a Faulkner in your YouTube videos? You're kicking. You're not kicking around a. I'm kicking around a lie bird. Oh, that's what the term is. It is a Sharon. For. It is you're, a Sharon. You're kicking around a lie bird. You're not. Why? What's wrong with the game day match footy? I'm sure Sharon would be more well, than willing. Sharon, if you're listening, I, I wouldn't. Well, I do have my, my Faulkner one touch, which is which is handy. Okay, I, yeah. I would never touch. What's the WA footy? I didn't even know there was a WA There's one. There's a, a Burley. I'm oh, not, the Burley. I'm not going yeah. anywhere no, near a that Burley. That is pointy. Hurts a foot, and they'll be going there, you Victorian cowards. But no. that is just. I'm steering well clear of Burley. So I, I think the liar bird is a Sharon. I'm not actually sure what it is, but as well, the answer is I've got uh, it's a worse quality leather. So, oh, right. so this is coming from a man who spent five <laughs> years working at the AFL store. This is a man who knows his football. Yep. Um, I don't kick them very often on weekends, but I know a lot about them. Uh, a liar bird is isn't kangaroo leather. Yeah. The Sharon does it get any more Australian? The Sharon game day ball is kangaroo leather, and that's what you need to be kicking around, mate. So <laughs> I'm going to start a GoFundMe page after this. <laughs> Clearly, YouTube isn't paying the bills quite as it would like to be, and we'll get the fans to donate for a Caden McDonald match ball. So finally, you can so the the ball can match the prestige of which you you have undertaken. Yeah, beautiful. Well, I'm keen. Well, the, yeah, the answer is um, myself and Cookson played footy tennis with my good Sharon. Uh, oh, so, so you did have one. The Mister, this is the answer I was looking for. Well, I did have one, but it became waterlogged and shocking. So I used that one in footy tennis, and it now has no logos, and it's just scuffed. Okay, but that's I reckon that's the best footies to kick the old ones that. Oh, it, it's like so plenty scuffed. of grip. No, no. Oh, so the opposite. So they like, come around. Yeah, full it's circle. dry and slippery, and bald. Um, <laughs> yeah, and mid bowls liebird was just in the back of my car after we kicked the footy the other right. way. So okay. we used that. But well, yeah, a, a good Sharon. Uh, it's on me on me Chrissy list. <laughs> yeah, I'll be sure. I'll be sure to get. We've never got each other a Christmas present. I don't think. No. Nah. This might be the year. No. Nah. Sharon game day match balls one hundred and sixty dollars. So completely unrelated. I reckon that's what we set the cap at. <laughs> uh, another really um, heartwarming moment out of the week, and a realization, sort of. You know how good is it when someone who's been underrated for probably a bit long finally gets noticed. Um, and this isn't exactly that, but David Mundy's game on the weekend for, I think he's 35, is he? Maybe 36, something like that, is getting on. For him to star the way he did, it's funny, everyone keeps on saying play the youth, but then you have blokes like David Mundy who's getting out there, delivery inside 50, absolutely sumptuous. Uh, goes to show you that age is, is just the number. He'd be 34s? I reckon 35. 35, wow. Um he was almost retiring last year, I'm pretty mm. sure, and he stuck around for another year. Jeez, he's been impressive. It's a funny one how sports science now 
it is raising the retiree age. You know how it used to be you get the 30 and, yeah. now, and now the clock's ticking. You yeah. know, unless you are booming as a footballer, time's up. Now you get to 30 and you still have years left. Like, Well, that makes sense with the amount of like sports science that has come in since 2010. Um, like that would make sense that they're getting the most out of players now. Back in the day, players would finish a game, they'd jump on the source, they'd get pissed all during the week. You know, they weren't training, mm. their body wasn't the temple of which it is now. Not all all the cameras weren't on them like the smartphones now. Players now are forced to be responsible, do all the right things. Yep. And it's become a lot more professional where unless you are going out there and you're doing your rehab properly, you do a lot, most a lot of the players are meditating, doing the yoga. Unless you're doing that, you're going to find yourself on the... Excuse me, on the outer. Mm. Yeah, well, like you think, and I was going to say Matty Rao, but he, you know, he's been injured a little bit, but the way he prepares himself and he's really diligent with his rehab and apparently he's obsessive with his, uh, like, uh, with his build-up to games and the way he prepares himself, he he's going to play till 35 if well, he doesn't get injured. Well, it's funny how the tides turned, how I think the cool thing used to be to not, not give us stuff. You know, to be the sort of player who rolls in, beg over your jumper. Yeah. We haven't seen you for a week. You've just been thinking cans all week. You come out, you still kick 10 goals. And it's like, Jay, how cool is he? And yeah. it used to be not as cool to be the ultimate professional mm. prepare. Now, if you're the, if you're, I don't know, when Bailey Smith got drafted, all the conversation, oh, he hasn't had, a, he's never had a drop of alcohol. He's the ultimate professional. All that stuff. Now you're the in thing if you're doing that stuff. You're. The envy of the football world. So someone like, okay, it was frustrating to see like a Cade Simpson, the consummate professional, being forced to retire by the league. And it, for my mind, a forced retire isn't a, isn't a retire. That's a delisting. Yeah. <laughs> so to be, it hurts to say, for Cade Simpson to be delisted by my football club purely because of the nut, his age, for mm. no other reason, because he was still playing elite football and you've got hacks getting a game at the moment. Yeah. Does my head in. And no offense to Kate Simpson, but because uh, there was some talks that maybe he went out because of the ins you were getting, but he doesn't seem like he's on the biggest of pay packets. He seems no. like the ultimate clubman. So it was just a bit bizarre. And plus, to you've got Patricia Seaton running around the half back line. Mm. Kate Sim- and Plowman. Kate Simpson's far better fo- half back than both those players. Slot him in there, move Petrovsky Seaton onto a, into the midfield, Plowman on the bench. Anyway, what I'm trying to get at is that. There is scope. While I've been massive on the uh, on the play of the youth, that's the answer. There is also plenty of scope for uh, for the elderly gentleman. Yeah, for sure. Let's get into our goals behind and out in the fools. All right, let's move on to it. Uh, well, for the, this is our first repeat segment. Yes, it's come back for another week. We're still looking for a sponsor for the goals behind and out in the fool. We nearly had one. Who was that? Burley footies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But after our last <laughs> break, they've uh, they've moved away. Which it was is... going to be Ben Cousins as well, but it, he's, <laughs> he's decided to give us a chop. Do you want to kick us off, mate? Do you want to start with your out on the full? Out on the full? All right. Um, my out on the full is that uh, Buddy got injured. Yeah, that sucks, isn't it? Do you think that uh, this is this is him Done, like it will never see him at his best again. Like not even not at his best. We know we won't see him at his prime best. But do you think we'll never see him put ten weeks of good football together again? Well, no, I don't think we'll see that again. But the good news is, I'll go a bit Mitch Cleary mode here. The good news is it's bone bruising rather than hamstring calf. Is that is that typical of Mitch Cleary? Is it to give a bit of optimism? And uh, not optimism, but you know how they just the journos. It's not just oh, but he's injured. All oh, right. Like, but he's out with a yeah. little bit of bone bruising okay. around the right knee. Yeah. Um, so that's... Jeez, I can't believe you went full Mitch Cleary. <laughs> <laughs> we love Mitch Cleary, friend of the pod. Um, but, yeah, it's just shattering, like, the, the excitement around, he could get the 1,000 this year, you know, yeah. if not next year. Yeah. And he's back, you know, it, it, he's kicking five again. He's and you think with everywhere. the new rule changes, the way Tex has reinvented himself, it's sort of the oh. rebirth of the key forward. Oh. Buddy would be the number one candidate to dominate oh, with his, yeah. with the one-on-one nature. He's a, other than Dusty Martin, probably the best one-on-one player in the game. So yeah. that would have been massive to have him in there. That's a big shame. Yeah, so to kick five and be out for a month, um, it's my out in the full. It's, it, it's disappointing. That's probably the, as good an out in full as we'll get. I think everyone in the league will agree that that's the out in the full. So what have you got? My out in the full, um, I think that there's a team that has got away with too much for too long, fallen, gone under the radar. Can you think of who it might be? 
I can. Go on. I don't know how hard you want. Is this all right? I'm going to say St Kilda. Nah, the Gold Coast Suns. Nah, good one. Uh, just didn't what they kick a goal in the last couple minutes of the first half, which was their first goal. Dominated by the dogs, absolutely embarrassed, and. I feel like they get so much leeway because it's like, it's almost like, you know, how when the AFLW first started in the first year, through no fault of their own, it's a brand new competition. All the journos didn't really want to knock it. You know, players would turn the ball over in really bad areas or make really poor mistakes. Mm. And the commentators didn't want to come out and bash bash them the way they would the men if it was the men who made the mistake. Yeah. And I feel like Gold Coast, because they're, um, because they are this sort of, Sad club, like a bit pathetic, really. Like the way that they have mm. no fans. Of Wait for the Gold Coast faithful to get on. Yeah, <laughs> very little support. Is very, it seems like not a whole lot of culture, but it did seem like Stewie Jew was starting to move it. And they're just making no steps forward. And there's no – I know they have the youth. They have, I know Real's injured and they've got this nucleus of young talent that could take them somewhere. I just feel like we need to see more from the Gold Coast. And they haven't had the spotlight put on them enough. They get a free pass almost because they are the Gold Coast. Mm. But enough's enough. Lift, Gold Coast, you're on notice. Yeah, it's a great one. Um, I think they they need to show a little bit more than what they're showing at the moment for the rest of the season. Absolutely. I thought it was going to be eight, nine potentially 10 game sort of winning season for them, but it's going to be another six or seven. They were witches hats if, against the dogs. That. And the issue with the Gold Coast, it's not just a matter of having another shit season. It's a matter of they show nothing for the rest of the season. These players don't show fight. All of a sudden, an Anderson or a Real or a King, one of them jets off. If one goes. They all go. Yeah. It, it's, that is the situation as far as I read it. Yeah. They're either all staying and they're like, you know what? Bugger it. We don't need to play in front of 100,000 at Carlton Collingwood. Mm. We're going to be the ones who take Gold Coast to the promised land. We'll make history. But if they can't see that vision and one of them leaves, then all of them won't see the vision. Yep. Out in the full Gold Coast. All right, I'm going to move on to my, my behinds and um, I've got Gold Coast. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. Which we've already touched on. Um, yeah. No, nah, same thing as what you were saying. Um, Why only a behind and not out in the full for you? Well, they were only behind because uh, the, I think the expectation and stuff gets lobbed in with how bad they've gone for, for eight years. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's sort of eight years of come on, clocks ticking. But to think they sort of restarted again when they got rid of May, Lynch, um, who are like Presti out. There was like a handful that left. That first sort of crop w- all walked away. Um, and when they got in Lacocious and, and, and Rankin, King, and now Rao, Anderson, it, it, they did start again. Yep. So I, I think the expectation's a little bit higher than what it should be because of how well they went last year. Yeah. But if they didn't go well, like going into last year, everyone thought they'd be the rock bottom of the rock bottom. Yeah. Sort of overachieved. The North Melbourne of this year. Mm. Uh, I uh, Just a quick super goal. Um, just while we're talking about Hang the Gold on. Coast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, is just, this is just could be a super goal every week. I love this bloke. <laughs> David Swallow, for him to stay at the club the way he has, number one draft pick, he is as big a club legend as anyone, as Cade Simpson, as anyone in the league presently. He is a champion. Anyway, moving <laughs> on to my behind, uh, Hawthorne uh, and Alistair Clarkson. Hate to put Clarko in the firing line because, uh, as we know, he is the champion. Well, he's proven star. nothing, so it's good yeah. that he finally <laughs> gets his day in court. <laughs> uh, but my issue I have with Hawthorne is... They are sliding. They're 17th from the ladder, I think, mm. and showing no promise, which is okay in the sense that, you know, they were at the top for so long. You're allowed to have a down year. You're allowed to rebuild. But my issue is that... They only – I could get this stat wrong, and I'm sure that there are no other AFL podcasts or shows out there that come in without the exact stat. Mm. But I'm pretty sure they only had one player under 20 or 21. 21, yeah. 21 playing on the weekend. And you have other clubs thriving, like your Sydney is playing seven or eight. Yep. So you, if you're 17th and you're reportedly – you know, not reportedly, Clarko came out and said that they're sort of re- rebuilding, restructuring, however, whichever word you use – and you're only playing one person that young, what are you doing? You're in no man's land. Yeah. Uh, Play more youth if you, your season's over. We know you're not going to win a flag. Play the youth. 
the real question is, what youth? Like, I don't know. It's not like there's an excitement around yeah. three, four, five of them in the VFL. It's like oh, that they've done. It was tough because they were trying to hang on to that top eight for a few years. Like they were playing in uh, semi-finals in twenty eighteen. Um, like that they they kept staying up there for so long that they went into the middle of the ladder a little bit where you're not contending but you're not rejuvenating the list and now they're just in that little stuck period where it's like they don't have elite uh, top draft picks. Yep. But they, I don't know, they're just in no man's land really. Yeah, and a lot some of the youth they are currently playing, when I say youth, they're not young but they're <laughs> a bit unknown to the rest of the footy world. Someone like a, uh, a Mitch Lewis and these sorts of blokes, like the key, f- some of their key, who's their other young? Kaczynski. Kaczynski, is there another one down there? Um Forward. Anyway, they're not showing heaps either. It's not like mm. the youth they have in studying the world a lot. The only reason why they weren't out on the full and they were behind is because I trust Alistair Clarkson. I trust his vision. Yep. And I think it'd be a bit rude to go out in the full on him. Um, geez, I do like CJ though. <sighs> He's he, so exciting. He is unreal. What an athlete. His intercepting on the weekend um, was really, really impressive. And you know how you see... Um, <laughs> There are some exciting halfbacks who you see bouncing away with the footy um, or balking players or getting away, and you think, um, gee, they're exciting. Like a Johannesson. Gee, he's exciting pace, but turns it over a lot um, and sometimes is prone to brain fades. Yep. CJ is just a classy, talented, smart footballer. He mm. looks like he could be anything. Yep. Um, I, I sort of feel in these sort of uh, instances, uh, I start – Thinking what a Jago Amir is thinking. Yeah. Jago Amir. Yeah. Um, like, is he going... Don Mitchell. Jeez, I was sort of promised <laughs> finals and big crowds and uh, contending. And now, you know, we're second, second last and we're going, you know, backwards before we're going forwards. Yeah. Um, and one, um, they're in there too deep now where they... It's very rarely will someone do an Adam Saad and they've been traded to that club. And then they see they're going nowhere. And they bounce, no, yeah. And they bail out. Very rarely does that happen. I can't think of anyone else other than Saad. So it's not like a young player who's been there for four or five years and they can request a trade. It seems like they're in there to stay. And now they're rebuilding and they're going to be forced to go through the tough times. Oh, well. Not the worst thing in the world. They're playing AFL football. Yeah, exactly. Uh, goal. I want your goal. I can give you my goal. My goal is Toby Green. so yeah. And the Giants and Leon Cameron. Yeah, fair play. So... They were under that much heat the last two before the last fortnight. They were it was as big a doom and gloom as anyone else in the league. Almost more doom and gloom around the Giants as there was North, as there is North Melbourne. It was like this is the end of their run run of contendership. No more finals. Um, all their players, good players, are going to leave. You know this is devastating. Mm. They got a couple of injuries and it was compounded the issues even more. So we thought, but it didn't. Because then they had to play the youth, as we keep on saying. And their youth is top, top, top talent. Exactly. Unlike Hawthorne's youth, where you, where is it coming from? Their youth is elite. They've come in. They've been unreal. And Toby Green, you know, there have been question marks, especially since the documentary came out over Cornelio's leadership. Yep. Toby Green stepped in. And people have questioned Toby Green's character over the years, thought maybe he couldn't be a leader because he's too much, I mean, you yeah, acts up too much. He leads from the front. He does. Playing super footy, and he's gotten them the last two wins. All of a sudden, no one's talking about the Giants anymore. They're back into contention for the eight, and I love when people bounce back up off the campus. So I hope Carlton do it next week. All power to you, Toby Green, Leon Cameron, and the Giants. Um, people chop and change in the media, uh, the AFL media, and they jump on and jump off as quickly as anyone else. But are the Giants, after being, you know, uh, told that they're going to have to rebuild and whatnot. Are they a top eight chance? Yeah. Yeah, of course they are. Well, now they are. They have they beat the Pies. They beat the undefeated <laughs> Sydney. Uh, and I, I see a Giants rounding out the top eight. Could do. Absolutely yeah. could do. So, uh, absolutely now in the all-power to them. I love seeing, play, love seeing teams come back from, from the brink of despair. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, my goal <coughs> is a Lear, a Lear. Oh, I, I loved him at the Swans yeah. and I still do love him, but just, oh, he's just so quick and the way he reads the play and he's marking his strength, um, locking down one-on-one is exciting. Um, and then for him to go from the Swans to Port was a bit of a weird one over the summer. That yeah. was like a trade that 
you didn't really hear throughout the season. It wasn't like, you know, people were asking him, Where's it, when's he going to sign his contract or whatnot? It was just this weird... I feel like when he left, when you heard he got traded to Port Adelaide, everyone had the same feeling of, I thought he could play. I thought he was good. Yeah. But when the trade happened, in my head at least, I was like, okay, well, there's something we don't know. He must not be accountable when he's meant to be accountable. He must not follow the game plan. Maybe he's a bit self. I don't know. Maybe there's something we don't understand. Yeah. But as it turns out, he's just a star. And apparently, <laughs> um, apparently Sydney didn't want to get rid of him. It was more a squeeze type operation. It someone, was, yeah. Someone had to go, which is sad when you, when you want to keep a player, but they have to go. Yeah, well, <clears throat> yeah, Tommy McCartans and, and whatnot are holding up, you know, their end of the bargain at Sydney. So it's not like they've got a massive hole in their side and they're performing well. So it sort of seems like one of those trades or um, the, it's a bit of a win-win for both parties. But, geez, Port Adelaide have picked up an absolute asset. Well, it's crazy. Uh, maybe Sydney didn't anticipate the uh, the rule changes and how much it helps a good one-on-one players. And that's what's happened to, like, Liam Jones, a very similar player to Ali earlier. When it was team defense, a lot of the time he could get stuck in tra- translation. Do I go up? Do I push up? Do I rush the play? Mm. Or do I stay back on my man? He'd get lost a little bit, be yep. stuck in no man's land. But now that it's more one-on-one contest, all your job is to do is to beat your man. So you see your Tex Walkers coming back into the back mm. into the game. And, yeah, the key defensive posts, the good interceptors, Liam Jones, Darcy Moore, Alira Lee, uh, absolutely starring, and it's great to see. Yeah, it is. Uh, oh, we've got a couple more minutes to go on the Back Pocket Plugger podcast, but um, a weird one that, that came up from Friday night, which I want to bring up to you, is a couple of the Pies boys getting in really hot water for something that seems so innocent. Um, <laughs> My... Gut instinct when it first happened. Obviously, you're referring to... Yeah, so the, the context is uh, Jeremy Howe and Dugowie got injured during their clash against West Coast at Optus. Uh, they were in the rooms and, you know, get, getting, you know, uh, diagnosed, I guess. Yeah. And then their box of phones were there, which by AFL's rules, you can't touch your phone from the minute you walk into the change rooms. Yep, integrity. Like I once went in with the D's while they were warming up and I was filming, like vlogging on my camera and I got told to put my camera, like my phone away because there's no phones allowed in the AFL rooms but like from before the game till the final siren and then it's it's fine. Yep. Um, so they've, they've used their phones and really they're probably texting the wife, you know, the mum, the dad, the family just going, oh, yeah, yeah, look, I feel all right. I'm fine. Bit sore. Um, I'll be right. Just getting back to family. But, yeah, there's been a, a massive Are they going to come down hard? Um, and in my opinion, rightfully so. <coughs> my gut instinct when, it first, when I first heard about the news was they're clearly not messaging a bookie saying, hey, bet on this. They're clearly not ruining the integrity of the game. Yeah. They're not texting the opposition coach saying, hey, We've, I've just had a look up on the board. We're going to tag. But they're not doing anything like that. We know they're innocent in mm. that sense. What Bulldogs player did that? Was it something Talia? What'd they do? <sighs> oh, yeah, told his brother. <laughs> told, it, told his brother. Like, we don't want to get this wrong. We don't want to <laughs> Allegedly. Slander. No, no, no. Wasn't it? Uh, yeah, they were just, they as, as brothers do, just chatting. And I think he might have given away a bit of information <laughs> that he wasn't meant, meant I to. I think he got delisted, didn't he? Something like that. <laughs> oh, I don't know. But it does happen. In this uh, world, yeah. Allegedly. Uh, <laughs> but where I change, had a change of heart was that I, lo- I love when rules are black and white. No grey area. I love when rules are... When you walk into the change room, you cannot use your phone until the final siren goes full stop, no matter what you're doing. All the players understand it. It has been relayed to them a million. Like, they know you can't touch your phone. Mm. So when you do it, even though you're doing innocent, when you yeah. when you go against the black and white rules, it brings the integrity of the game into question. Who knows? Like, I suppose if one of them, if someone was to cheat, and this happens in world sport, it happens in international cricket, people cheat, people spot mm. gamble and that. We don't know their character. We don't know what they are. For all we know, they could be the top to cheat. Yep. And even though we know that they more than likely were not, there's still a chance that maybe one of the ones, not maybe not those two, but someone in the league is the type of person to do that. Mm. And if that's the case, which it could be, the rules are black and white. Follow the rules. Otherwise, you get punished. So I wonder what sort of punishment they're going to get. I'm not sure, but I, I know that everyone's keeping it in context. Like I was listening to the radio during the weekend and it's not like anyone's here going, 
Yeah, how disgusting. Like, yeah, yeah. everyone's going, they were 100% not doing anything wrong, but um, not doing anything uh, malicious. Mm. They were they were just texting their friends. That's fine. But you still can't do it. So they're going to cop a fine because you have to, like, the, the, the lake can't allow it. Yep. But no one, I don't think anyone's there blowing, you know, uh, making a storm in a teacup, going, oh, they're bad people or anything like that. It's all being kept in context, I think. Yep. Uh, I think that's probably it for the Back Pocket Plug Up Podcast. Rog, thanks for joining me. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm so excited for this weekend of football. I'm going to the Anzac Day Eve, then there's Anzac Day. <laughs> it's crazy how much a bad <laughs> boss can flatten, flatten you, but I'm still excited. I'm still, Dave's talking will be an absolute scream. I bet, Jamie, me excitement for Carlton Brisbane's gone down uh, exponentially. Uh, well, after you know the big exciting weekend of football, we'll be back next Tuesday or Wednesday to discuss all the action. So join us then for some more podcasting. But we appreciate everyone who listened and everyone who watched. And we'll see you all very, very soon. Keep plugging away your back pockets. (laughs)